Hey guys, my name is Julia and I'm one of Routine Services Librarians over at the Main Library on Goodwood. Today we're using math to make coded bracelets. The supplies that accompany this video are available at the Main Library in a limited capacity. We're going to do things backwards this time because we need to know how this works. So let's talk about the math, or if you will, the explanation. When we count in everyday life, we use something called a base 10 or decimal number system. So bear with me. This means that every position to the left of a number is 10 times the value of the number to the right of it. So we start off with the ones and then we bump up over to the tens place and the hundreds place and the thousands place and so on. And each time we move to place value, it multiplies by a factor of 10. So if we have the number uh, 24601, we understand that this means there is one in the ones place, there's nothing in the tens place, there are uh, six hundreds, four thousands, and uh, two twenty thousands. And if you wanted to add one to this number, you would just add another one to the ones column and bump that up. And then if you wanted to add nine to this number, you would um, run out of places in your ones column and you would have to bump things over to the tens column and then leave the ones column blank. So if we have 19 kangaroos and we add one, we're not going to say we have one and one tens kangaroo, we're going to say we have 20 kangaroos. Honestly, if you don't have any numbers in a column, you just put a zero in its place to represent it. So if you're saying the number 403, we know this means there are four hundreds and zero tens and three ones, but we wouldn't say Put anything else here other than a zero to represent that we wouldn't put a little emoji we wouldn't just leave it blank we wouldn't do any of those other things with it there's no rule that says you have to use decimal for everything though and there's actually a lot of scenarios where it makes sense to use something other than decimal today we're going to talk about hexadecimal which is works exactly like a base 10 number system except that everything is based on the number 16 and there are 16 digit options Okay, let's tackle the 16 digits thing first. So in uh, decimal, you're gonna have this uh, digits zero through nine, and that represents everything you need. And you have those same numbers in decimal. The problem is that after you run out of um, places in it, you don't have a way to represent 10 through 15 in a single digit format. So instead of using other numbers for that, we start using letters. So 10 would be A, 11 would be B, and so on. And we with F being 15. And I know that it's weird to see letters as numbers, but there's no rule in the universe that says that A has to only ever mean the English letter A. In this case, A is going to mean 10. So in hexadecimal, the ones column is still gonna be for the ones, but when we bump over to the next place value, it's actually gonna be for the 16's place value. And then when you bump over to the next place value, it's for the 256. And after that, we go to the 4096 and so on and so on. But every time we move over a place, it goes up by 16. So how do you even write numbers in this? Well, if you wanted to start off with the number one, just like decimal, you would write one and one equals one either way. Same thing with anything up to nine. But when you start writing uh, at 10, maybe you're gonna start with A for it. And I know that still seems weird for letters, but it's fine. So if we wanted to write 15, we would write F for 15. But what happens when we want to write 16? We're just going to bump over to the next place value. So we're going to put a 1 in the 16's column and then a 0 in the 1's column. And this will actually equal 16. Okay, so if you wanted to write 17, how would you think you would do this? Yeah, that's right. So you would do 11 for 17 or I guess one one rather. How about 26? So for 26, we're gonna have a one in the 16's column and then 10 in the ones column. Okay, so how about 100? 100 would leave us six in the 16 columns and four in the ones columns. All right, and if you wanted to write uh, 256, one in the 256 column, zero in the 16s and the ones column. And you could do this to infinity. So why even use hex numbers in the first place? Uh, with a computer, everything is going to be eventually converted to binary numbers because that's what a computer is capable of reading. Hex is an easier way to represent binary numbers and large decimal numbers. So for example, if we had the hex number FFFA98, it would be this in decimal and 
this in binary. So which do you think might be easier for a programmer to read and write quickly in a line of code? Okay, to make your own hex bracelet, you're gonna need your hex decoder, a bag of multicolored seed beads, some jewelry cord, a pencil, scissors, and a sheet to write your message on. So to get started, you wanna figure out what you can say. And if you stuck around for our binary bracelets video, you saw that you were limited to about eight characters in binary, you can do at least double that with hex because you're gonna have more room because we're more efficiently writing numbers here. So decide what you're gonna say first, and I think I'm actually just gonna use the names of my pets. Right. And once you've got your message down, you want to write the numbers that go along with it. On our sheet, we've made letters and characters correspond with numbers. So we're saying that A, is e because of the first letter in the alphabet, is going to be equal to 1. So this is the decimal value we've attached here, and then the hexadecimal value is going to go after the equal sign. Um, so to go down, you just want to write your hex value under the letter for it. And once you've got your message written out, written out with the numbers, you want to pull out your beads. And the way we packed them was uh, with the frequency we thought you might need beads on them. So you want to make sure that you actually have enough colors for it. Uh, if you use maybe like six E's in a message, you might not have enough. So double check that you've got enough letters before you start stringing things. And to start our message, I figured we would just use one gold bead uh, to clarify that we are starting. Alright, so when you've got your message chosen and you've made sure that you have enough beads to make your message work, you want to go ahead and start stringing your beads. So you can take your jewelry cord, uh, and this is fun jewelry cord because it glows in the dark, and then you want to start stringing your beads on, and they are very tiny, so be careful with them. And you want to make sure that you either pinch the end or hold or tape it or something because these will absolutely just slide off if you don't. When you've got your whole message set together, it's helpful to tie a knot so the beads don't slide too much on either end of your message. and this should keep your beads in place. What you wanna do next is figure out how much space you need around your wrist. And then in that ballpark, you wanna go ahead and tie a knot to tie this off. And you can get fancier with your knot work, you can get basic, however works best for you. All right, make sure things actually fit. And if you're good, you go ahead and trim off the excess. and you should be all set uh, with your coated bracelet. If you guys have any questions or comments about today's activity, holler at us. Our phone number is 231-3770, or you can leave a comment on this video. Better yet, tag us on Instagram and show us what you made. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this, and I cannot wait to see you next time.